Uh, I wish to keep my family happy to be a lot of time with them and not too much at work. Uh, so to continue investing time in, uh, in my personal life as well, it's very easy to be fully dedicated to work and never touch your guitar again. And uh, that's what I wish for myself. Yeah. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. 20 Minute Leaders is a proud supporter of Make-A-Wish Israel and tech to peace and is in proud collaboration with Secret Chord Ventures, J Ventures, Riverside FM, Fusion VC, Birthright Excel, J Impact, Leap, Google for Startups, and Hippo, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Uh, we're going to talk about um, productivity, workplace productivity, generative AI, um, obviously the most, uh, the, you know, the biggest emerging technology, I think, that we've been hearing about and speaking about over the last eight months or so. And so we're going to dive into uh, how your new company as co-founder and CTO, what, what you're doing there. But, but you also have a remarkable experience all over the place from, from, from open web uh, to, to Gong to mobile. So, uh, you know, really, really cool background working with some some of the most amazing companies here and um, and so i'm excited to dive into what you're doing today again thank you for being here uh, thanks for the intro great well um, t- tell me a little bit about your you know your relationship with technology as an as sort of as an engineer and product so that we can you know understand a little bit your mindset better uh, so my journey with technology honestly started at a young age. My father was like a big IBM kind of guy, led the IT at IBM Israel. So I touched computer from a very early stage, uh, hacked it, developed game, developed a lot of things. And my deeper passion for it honestly started with the iPhone. When the iPhone was released, I was mind blown, started immediately coding for it. I honestly barely had enough money to get a Mac. So I did the Hackintosh trick back in the days. So it was fun days and I started developing apps, getting into it, developing camera apps, many things. Uh, During the years, I've been developing a lot of products. My passion is honestly more so for product than for technology. I use technology to to solve the pains or the problems that uh, I really want to solve. And uh, since the iPhone, I believe generative AI is the only other time that my mind was blown with what you can do. Like I was amazed by the multi-touch and how advancement uh, the iPhone brought in. And I have to say, this is the only time that it happened to me again was a few years back when I started seeing GANs and what uh, deep learning can do actually. So you're seeing GANs, you're seeing what deep learning can do. What, what's going through your mind? What, what is sort of, you know, your, your executive yet entrepreneurial mindset taking you? Well, how, what's the process? Um, so like I mentioned before, it always starts with problems that I'm facing and how can it be solved? So when I see the generative models in GANs, uh, a lot of the problems that are already in my mind, I'm starting to think about how can we solve them? How can this be productive? Now, as an amateur musician, a lot of it went to how can I create music with it? But as a VPR in the, at the open web, uh, <laughs> the more concrete problems I saw how can I solve is how can we help people do more with their time using generative AI? And that uh, led me after a lot of trials to to summarization, which isn't the most trivial thing about generative AI. Most people look at it as how can I generate videos, deep fake videos maybe, or how can I generate images and uh, even create a new email. But honestly, I was looking at it from how can I create less content? There's too much going on work. Why can someone process it for me and help me just figure out what's going on? Yeah, I love it. Okay. So, um, lo- love the mindset, love the transition. Uh, and we're talking about, um, you know, summarization, uh, GIST, obviously, you know, great, great name for a company. And, um, you know, paint me the picture of the, of, you know, the potential here, the, uh, the opportunity that's presented once you sort of re-examine or rethink the way that we're, you know, we're, we're digesting information and how, 
generative AI and summarization can be, you know, really fundamentally helpful here? So the opportunity is huge. I believe it's pretty obvious to most people that you talk with that there's just too much going on, whether it's your mom with her WhatsApp groups or iMessage with a gigantic amount of messages flowing in there or at work or in Slack, for example, where again, people are blabbering and talking a lot. Uh, some of it is important. A lot of it is about what they're having for lunch and things that you just read through to understand if it's interesting. And not even talking about Twitter and emails and all the articles going on in the world. So the opportunity is honestly to help every human being which is interfacing with a digital device and going on the internet. We want to help them gist it. Having said that, of course, our market is the workspace and helping people do their job first uh, and not solving this problem for the entire world, which is okay. hard. Yeah, for sure. And so... Um common use cases for when people need to to have a service like this for their work, for their daily work? How, well, how do you perceive it? Sure. So uh, the first product we released was the Gist for Slack. And the use case is basically having too much conversations going on in too many channels in Slack and just getting a digest of it. So you can get your digest on demand when you slash Gist in Slack or as a daily schedule. Uh, where you can follow topics or specific channels. Now, we're going to take a thousand words and turn them into two sentences of what happened there. We're going to understand if it's of interest to you, even though you're in the channel, doesn't mean you're interested in it. And we're going to digest it to just what matters. So we do this in Slack, and our goal is to do this uh, across all the tools you use. Interesting. And so you're, so effectively, it's the it's the ability to to really, you know, distill the, the most critical pieces that, that would allow for you to take actionable measures, you know, based on, based on whatever, you know, conclusion you came up with. I guess part of the problem is that you cre we're creating, you know, in these long summaries or these, or, or these, a lot of content, then you miss out on the, on the really the gist of it, which is the action that needs to be taken or the lesson to be learned from, from this content. And it gets pushed into some envelope, hidden in some drawer somewhere. Exactly. Cool. And so let's talk a little bit about the technology and, uh, and, and, you know, generative AI in general, what, how, what, what that supplies for a company like just in, in 2023, what does it look like to build a company, a generative AI company in early 2023? First of all, it's very exciting. I have to say, like everybody is here in this podcast, I'm sure have been looking at the advancement at this stage. So. I wouldn't call us per se a generative AI focused company because a lot of our technology is actually about creating a graph of your work data, understanding what interests you, connecting the dots between tools that are related. And our last mile is using generative AI in order to digest that for you. So we are using all the advancements, the open source and a lot of the advancement in the generative AI field in order to create these really awesome stories, enable you to ask questions about the data that we detected. Um, so on the one hand, it's exciting and we're getting a lot of benefit without investing all of our effort right. in advancing generative AI. But, but it almost feels like this is a part of the, you know, the, the natural evolution of the, of this sort of this deep learning infrastructure that started, you know, in, in sort of this. 2015 and attention is all you need, et cetera. And, and so it's almost feels like the, the technology is progressing so quickly. And at the same time, these infrastructure layers are getting built for these applicative application based companies. How do you, how do you keep up with, you know, latest advancements because you want to make sure that you're, you know, at the cutting edge and ahead of the game at the same time, you want to be lean and, and, and to focus on product. So how yeah. do you, how do you balance these two? So to be very clear, we do not focus about advancing generative AI models. We are focusing what? on utilizing what everybody else is progressing. Uh, many thanks to the companies like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. Uh, but we're focusing our time on gathering the data and on the product itself, on creating a graph, understanding what's connected to what, uh, and leaving the, our last mile, which is a big part of our product, to what we utilize from open source solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and one of the things that I became very curious about 
in generative AI is the user experience portion. And that's so, and, and you know, you also, you've also held uh, significant product positions and so I'm sure you, you appreciate the, both sides. And, and so what is a, you know, what are the, the things to consider when it comes to user experience interacting with a product like that of Gist? Sure. Um, so there are a few interesting aspects of it. Uh, the first obvious one is, is speed. Like when you want to process and create advanced usages of generative AI, it doesn't necessarily come in very quickly. As for example, we're trying to process a huge amount of data and speed is a, is a very important matter. And um, another aspect is how you actually validate that what you generate from these generative models is actually correct. Uh, I'm sure many of the people here use generative models such as ChatGPT, ask the yep. questions, and it just mumbles something that looks correct, but it's not correct. Sure. So again, a lot of the product and technological effort we are focusing in is to make sure that uh, how we summarize is always correct, is based on the data that we collected and not something that the model can just automatically create. Yeah, I can elaborate a bit more about it, but I'm not sure we have enough time for that. I would love, no, no, I would love that. I think that this would be very interesting. Okay, sure. So generally speaking, one of the issues everyone is familiar with is that these models can generate anything. They were trained in order to complete based on text from the open web. Uh, very soon Bing would probably release some kind of Google search like feature that tries to tell you about everything that you search for. And that's the main issue in the generative engineering uh, models. It's very hard to measure it when it's based on plain model. So what are we we're focusing on is actually detecting the results beforehand and making sure that the generative model only generates something that is highly uh, related and relies on the data that we've collected, not something that would just uh, be popped up from the model. So. For example, even if we train a generative model on a company's data and enable free prompts to generate any questions of it, uh, that might cause a lot of the, the results or the answers to be incorrect. So we have developed a few technical ways to make sure that the data is always correct. And it, how, how important is the human in the loop for, for this process? So you have the technical aspects of how you are able to, I guess, evaluate or assess your own performance, but it, what about that of the human interaction? So specifically in the way that we do it, uh, it's not critical for the success of the summaries because of mm -hmm. how we collect the data and, and serve it, but uh, we do collect always as much human feedback as possible. Uh, when people share these summaries or give us feedback about them, we learn a lot implicitly and explicitly. He's very, very cool. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, you're, you've done a lot. You've been a part of some amazing companies. So you're, you know, on one hand, you're building, you know, a generative AI startup in, you know, the hottest time for AI ever. Um, and it sounds like with, with a product that, that, you know, the, the shift will be, you know, there will be a shift where people use AI and generative AI to transform, you know, whatever knowledge we have or create to, to, to these coherent pieces. And you're talking about a specific use case of that. Um, but on the other end, you're still building a startup and you're, you're leading, you know, the, you're leading the technology vision for the startup and as a co-founder, what do you, what are you bringing with you to this journey? that you're taking away from, you know, your background, your history. And uh, it's a, it's always a question I like to ask when people that have a lot of experience go on, go on these new journeys. So one of the main things I'm bringing with me from past experiences is my co-founder Itzik, which I've been working with for the past 10 years. Uh, so that's the main thing. We've both tackled a lot of problems, uh, mostly related to data and consumer products so uh, we have a lot of experience in how to create growth for example even if we create a very cool product growth is still a core thing we need to tackle as a startup or how we hack this growth 
And uh, I have to say, we've implemented a lot of it in how to build our current products and how to have them scale, which is a huge, huge challenge. Uh, other than that, resiliency, I have to say, I've been at growth startup, early stage startup. It's always hard. You always need to continue doing what you do and be resilient and uh, just never give up. I believe that's one of the best advices that I believe in for startup is don't give up too quickly. Those who continue with that line, tackle it again and again and again are the ones that essentially is going to, to win it at the end. And which part do you enjoy most in the process? The speed, speed and touching the market. Uh, when you work at growth stage or larger companies, we all know how it feels. Everything is slow. Uh, so speed, I believe it's the thing that's most the most fun to me, releasing things every day, every two days, seeing how it interacts with. I mean, we've just released the gist for Slack like two months ago. We already have, I don't want to say the number, but a lot of companies, both big and small, Fortune 500, a lot of people. So it's, it's moving really fast, so it's very exciting. So you're, 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 you, so you enjoy working on things that are very high touch, very you know, that are very, you know, product led growth oriented, you see how people respond to them. You see how people interact with your product and you can just nail it. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I have to say, we've actually considered when we started a startup, like how do we grow it? Do we go with B2B sales? Do we go to the COO and tell him, Hey, everybody in your company needs it. Or we go to the person at the end, to the engineer, to the product manager and give them just start using it. So. Uh, after giving a lot of thought, we are a lot more of PLG people. We know how to build consumer products. It's a lot more fun. So honestly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was uh, it? What was there a reason not to do that for you? Not to go on the PLG route? Um, a lot of B2B startups, they try to do the B2B sales from the top. You try to close a company, you try to use the relations here at Israel. Like we know a lot of companies here at Israel. My partner Itzik really has been in the industry for 25 years. He was leading companies like Blizzard and Wix. So it, we had a lot of connection here at Israel. So going PLG is kind of not using a lot of it in order to use your real passion and skill, which is just to release a product that product hunt and have it uh, interesting enough. Yeah, no, completely. If, you if you're looking ahead, um, you know, two, three years, four years down the line, what do you think will be the differentiators that will make just, you know, successful or not? You know, what really are the core elements that, that would make the difference here? Um, I believe it's simplicity. We're working on a complex product. We have to keep it on the one hand simple so that everyone in the organization can use it and not just the most advanced people who want to get a very advanced job done. Like from the get go, we're trying to keep the product super simple. You just slash just in Slack, you get a summary. We will have to continue having it simple while we integrate more and more tools into a place where you can actually just everything that's going on at work. So that's going to be a key factor for our growth. <laughs> I believe the second one is to utilize your learnings from one company to another. Uh, our goal is to create a system that can integrate to the organization data and organizations have a lot of data to learn from each other. We believe then in five years from now, organization which would not utilize machine learning models or AI for internal use cases or how to help their employees be better, uh, would just not, uh, would not be able to compete with the rest of the companies. So we would need to utilize what, how the global company data can utilize a specific company to be better because it's definitely possible. I think we all know. <laughs> Last question, but uh, maybe the most important one here. What, what do you wish for yourself on this journey? What I wish, good question. <laughs> uh, I wish to keep my family happy to you be a lot of time with them and not too much at work. Uh, so to continue investing time in, uh, in my personal life as well, it's very <laughs> easy to be fully dedicated to work and never touch your guitar again. And uh, that's what I wish for myself. Yeah. 
I, I'm gonna need a I'm, I'm gonna need your help with that ever since I created my own thing I have I don't I haven't seen the light outside of the office and so <laughs> I, I, I can resonate with that well Itai thank you so much for this time and for the energy and the insights it, it's a pleasure talking to you and meeting you and getting to hear your story so thank you very very much thanks for having me you